Oh YouTube fans, here again and why not, why not, I did say by ado I'll start talking about Wooded Hour films that's right, Wooded Hour and this has to be one of my favourites I remember only seeing it once on Blu-ray and it's a hard one to get hold of and I don't know why because in 1992 it was very successful but then over the years didn't make as much as what was hoping it was going to make on the box office it was very dulcing on the cinema and it was a popular film for the early 90s. That being 1992 and that movie being Spit Second. That's right, Spit Second, starring my friend, the late Wooded Hour. you got the beautiful Tim Detail. This is Tim Detail, she was too pretty, too right tender, you know, that nice to look at. And the only issue is it's based on 2008. Now we know the film came out in 1992 and this is how they restricted the future of being. It never happened but again like most futuristic films do it ever does. But it always has you wondering about carpet warming, the environmental chains and the way the ozone layer is going. It does have you wondering if one day this will happen. I don't mean aliens, I mean in how it's based. Because it's based, like I say, on 2008. It's based on the future. And you've got fuds. they have got fuds. So we've got these special cars with wheels. Wooded Hour's got a car with wheels. We can go through water. And there's something else I like about this film. Something else I like about it. It's in London. It's not in America. It's not in New York. It's in our own tropical of this country. It's actually shot in London. You do get a few British actors on the way. It was also sadly no longer with us. But you get a few pitches actors. So it starts off with Wooden Hour, he's typing and he goes to a nightclub to look for a killer. And I always find it funny because the price for him to get into this nightclub and the price for him for drinks and so on, I'm thinking, bloody no, okay, it's a strip by, see a bit of boobs, see a nice star to strip or but never the thing unless it's so uh, bloody expensive in this nightclub. It doesn't give an arm and a leg to get in. The man doesn't get a jink. He doesn't jink, he has toko. The funny bit anyway, he's got this tiny dude, like nice, but she's talking in a proper lot of Liverpoolian accent. What is it you want, Tuck? What do you want, Tuck? And I'm thinking, you know, it's like hilarious knowing she's tiny and she's talking Liverpoolian. I thought that was like a laughable scene. Um, but the bit of the end, he got a lot louder, he got it shithead. So it's like fun in that scene. And he's got this daughter's looking dude, tatting up wooded hours. So she's not going to be peeping at him, she's going to the toilet. And long below, he gets killed. But he do some death. You don't see it, it's off steam. But then when wooded hour comes in, bad is in, you do see the after sorts. And every two minutes, you've got this idea, you've got this every breathing, and you hear that, you know, the, the pumping of an heart, and you see wooded hour, he, he has a panic attack. But then they save him. He gets a partner on the way, not a female partner, don't forget, he's a cop. He gets a partner. And his original partner got killed. And you do see a lot of fast packs of that. Now I do know that there were deleted scenes in this film. Sadly to say, because it's very rarely on DVD and Blu-ray, we we'll don't have to look to see that. But there were a lot of deleted scenes where I think one of them you see fast parts of his partner. It's usually fast parts of him, but as you get bits and bobs in there where he knows people who got killed by this thing. Because you find out all the way through the film, it's a serial killer, right? What you don't know is, I'm going to a bit of spoilers. So for people who've never seen Spit Second, I always do this. So warn him. One, two, three, four, five spoilers. It's not a human being what's killing these women. Not a, I said it on his last one. It's not a human. It's an alien. That's right, it's a freaking alien what has genes like a rat. That's a, right, that's not like a, a similar face to an alien. But it's very frightening when you do get the befearment of it. And it's killing women and ripping their hearts out. And it's not like playing with Wooded Hours, but in it where it writes a word on Wooded Hours and it's like a devil side, so it definitely likes to play with Wooded Hour and not in a naughty way. And um, so they're going after this thing with his partner, his new partner, his new partner sort of like gets some Wooded Hours tits. Wooded Hours sort of like this character and he's, he's not always that sort of a character about him, he likes smoking cigars, he eats a lot of tot, uh, 
and he's so cool enough to badass. He's a badass in this wood and owl, and that's what I like about it. Tim to tell used to be the partner's wife, and you got the idea he was having it away with her. And you got one cop, who I do know is sadly no longer with us. He was a bit of a dick with Wood and Owl. I mean, in one scene, Wood and Owl gets old of him and ends almost hitting him. You get another cop on the way, he's been in a lot of British stuff. He's, he's, you get the idea he's the boss, he's the daffer, he's the boss. And I love to see where he's getting these duns and he says, we're going to get big duns, big fucking duns, we're going to be fucking duns. And he, eventually when his partner goes a bit do lally. <laughs> So Tim to tell is a nice bit of it, he's in the shower, you can see a bit of Tim to tell in the nud, that nice to look at. And um, you get the idea about this alien and Wood and I was explaining that it's not a human what's killing these women and ripping their hearts out. There's a lot of good juice from after sorts, but again, you don't see it happen, it's more the after sorts, you know, you see in horror films. And that's what it is, it's expenseful, it's a bit of horror, a bit of sci fi. A murder mystery thriller, but with a difference. The killer, like I said, I'll repeat myself, is an alien. So Tim Tuttle gets abducted by this alien, which is funny, he doesn't kill her, but for some reason, wants to order a sacrifice for some reason. So she's hung up, that nice to look at. Wood and Owl gets the idea, and him and his, part, his partner just get caught by the alien, but doesn't get killed, it just puts a mark on his chest. It was just that funny because he's there, he passes out, and Wood and Owl says, That's where it is, and he bangs on his bloody chest. It was pretty painful. So they go into the sewer. Wood and Owl outsmarts the alien. The alien's down again, there's a good bit where it's hands like that. It's hard to explain as I saw the film, but again, copyright, which is funny because it's very, very fine this film nowadays. But his hands go like that near Wood and Owl. And Wood Owl's like that, dead still, and then he runs away, gets away from it, gets him a few times. Wood and Owl being a badass, outsmarts it. There's a good bit where he rips his fucking heart out, the alien, shoots its heart, they kill the alien, they save Tim to tell, and they sail off in the water, happy ending. And that's what I love about the film, it actually has a happy, satisfying en ending, which nowadays films don't, which pisses me off. I like the fact it's practical and all, when you do get the vehement of the alien, which, again, they don't shove it in your face. And like nowadays, when it's CDR, 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 this was practical, it was a man in a suit. You see, it's fine. It, looks, it really does look frightening when you do get the befearment, but it's not too in your face. You do get the befearment at the end. That's something that Hollywood these days needs to learn. Don't need CDR figuring or tassel. You just need a good story, and when you do see your fulfillment, there's bits here and there where you can tease the audience like it does in the film, but not to the point that it's just fucking unbearable. In this, you get the fulfillment nearly at the end of this alien thing. Like I say, Wood and I was a badass in this. He swears a lot. I love the bit where he says, we're going to get duns. Big fucking duns. I love that scene. I think it's an epic scene. I love the fact they kill it at the end. He tells his partner to shut up because he winds him up all the way through the film. I even love the trailer. There's an the trailer that says, something's really, really pissing him off. That's what I like about the film. It isn't PC pussified, unlike nowadays. It was proper 80. It was a biddy in that era. But Saturday day, didn't make money. Because people thought it was going to be an action film. It had Wooden Hour in it. It got a big shot done. But it wasn't. So I repeat myself. It wasn't. It was science fiction. It was expenseful. It was psychological. There's some action in it. But if you're going into it for action and action and action, you're going to be disappointed because it's not that type of film. But what you are getting is a good sci-fi, sort of a futuristic. Yeah, I know it never happened. It was 92. They based it on 2008. But what futuristic film is realistic? It's, I mean, in real life, am I going to walk across and see a figging eight-foot alien who wants to rip me figging heart out? No, it's a film. I go into it as a film. It's called Estate of Listen. Because what's a film to escape from reality? That's gold entertainment. So, nevertheless, I like it. It was split second. It was sad to say it wasn't as popular as what they was hoping it was to be in nineteen ninety two. But I still love it. It's a damn shame you could very very rarely find it. And I love it. But into them people, be smart, be safe. And I'll come back with some more movie reviews and more things on the way. Until then, I'll see you soon.